Hello, my name is Kristen Reno. I'm Shannon McClellan. My name is Ben Gammon. I'm Jonathan Chetzel. And today uh, I'm going to get taste to demonstrate how the nervous system communicates with the muscular system. The central nervous system controls muscle movements by sending electrical impulses called action potentials to muscle cells, causing them to contract when we consciously decide to move. Involuntary muscle contractions, such as breathing, heartbeat, and reflexes are either controlled by the brain unconsciously or respond to stimuli already existing in the body. First, we'll show you how a voluntary muscle movement works. Thought to move, thought to move is made. Do a over. <laughs> Your muscles will respond by making that movement, which is pretty much common sense. But how does it work? Everything is routed through the central nervous system, which consists of the brain and spinal cord. First, your body sends signal to the brain to be processed. Then the brain sends signal back to the muscles, telling them how and when to contract. What? Specialized cells called neurons to transmit action potentials to target muscle. Neurons use dif differences in membrane potentials to transmit signals from one neuron to the next, thus sending electrical impulses through the body at impressive speeds. These impulses reach target muscles and activate the potassium and calcium channels in the muscle which activate more action potentials causing the muscle to move. An awful sound. I would not want to get shocked by that. Now it will taste faster. So now we're going to get to the fun part. Well you have to do like, if you do it with a lot of small muscles it won't shock you that well. So you have to hit the bigger muscles. So yeah, are you gonna do it consistently or are you gonna just like put it on and then press it? So, yeah, but that's what my brother did when I saw him. Yeah. Alright, sorry if I cuss and pee or cry. Alright, ready? Are you going? Right right here please. Right here. Good. Alright. I really have to go. Oh you should have just done it. <laughs> <laughs> you just <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. I just want my breath, I don't want to pass out. Gasper, come Filming? Yep. Ah! <laughs> come on. Okay. Gotta get something a little harder than that. Ready? Push it hard on it. That's <laughs> <Yeah>, good. <laughs> We should switch legs because my other this leg's like shaky. <laughs> I got it. Why do you, oh man, the right. So uh, you'll notice that when we tase Jonathan, um, even though we take tased his left leg, his right leg was the one that kind of started like shaking and convulsing. And that's because uh, when the charge was sent up to the brain, it sent it to the other side because it was all... Uh, did you actually get that on video? Yeah. Four times. <laughs> Make sure I know. Tasers work by overloading the central nervous system with electrical charges that mimic the electrical impulses normally sent from the brain. The brain doesn't know how to process the influx of charge, and thus it is sent out to every muscle in the body instead of just. Oh, it's a the rapid and random contraction of every muscle in the body, causing complete loss of voluntary muscle control. The 50,000 volts of electricity being sent through the body can be interpreted by the brain as pain due to the muscle seizing. However, research suggests that there is very little permanent health risk to tasing. The stun gun that we use, Black Cobra. It is a uh, high voltage, low current stun gun, so it won't actually deliver too much electric shock to the body. While it does stimulate the muscles, it won't drop the person like a police stun gun, which will actually deliver a high current with a slightly lower voltage, but doesn't. Uh.